Good morning and welcome to our church today. We do know we have a couple of visitors here, so we do have a gift for you and we know who you are. So we would like you to accept this gift from us and learn a little bit more about our church. Additionally, I want to thank all of you for coming out on this rather brisk and chilly morning. Supposedly it's supposed to warm up into the 50s later today, so that'll make things a lot better. As you know, we're a little empty today. A lot of our members are down at a retreat, hopefully staying warm and enjoying themselves. But we have all of you with us and we are very pleased. I just have a couple of announcements to go over. They're already in your bulletin. Um, basically, um, March 2nd is Ash Wednesday. You'll see in the bulletin there is information there relative to how you would like to receive your ashes if you'd like to participate. And also the Latin Bible study is beginning on March 9th. So uh, please make note of those. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, let us Oh, wait a second. Yes. Real quick on uh, March 2nd, that's also the day of the Women's Fellowship meeting at 10 o'clock, so maybe be ready to bring your games and play. Bring your what? Games. We're gonna games. Game oh, it's Women's game day. Fellowship. Okay, March 2nd is also going to be Women's Fellowship meeting day, and it's game day. So if you are interested in attending, bring your games and your fun. Anything else? Penny Sunday. Oh, forgot. Penny Sunday next week. We always take more than just pennies, though, just so you know. <laughs> so uh, start collecting those and make sure you make a note to bring those in next Sunday. Anything else now? Nothing else? Let us begin our service. Trust in God. We come delighted in the wonder in the wonders God provides for us. We try not to worry, but open ourselves to God's heart. We come and wait pa waiting patiently for God to speak. We try to be still, listening for God's words Please join us in the singing of hymn 391, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And if you are going to sing, please have your mask on.
Micah 7, verses 1 through 6. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. He will make you innocence, your innocence radiate like the dawn, and justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to Thank you, Lynn. Tom and Mike and Sharon, thanks for the extra musical boost in the absence of the choir. You know, if this is what we get when we're missing 49 people at retreat, wow. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm truly grateful because as you came in this morning, I can literally say, look what the wind blew in. Because it is really nasty and unpleasant out there. Thank you for making the effort to be here. Um, as we go to the time of prayer, I want to mention a couple of big prayers for you. The first, of course, is Ukraine. For cooler heads to prevail, for something to turn a corner and push this back before it starts. And the other, I would ask you to keep your brothers and sisters in the Catholic faith in your prayers. Uh, you may have heard about the story. There was a priest, I, I believe he was in Arizona, and when he baptized babies, he said, we baptize you instead of I baptize you. And now the powers that be in the Catholic Church have said that this invalidates all those thousands of people who were baptized. I personally know and trust and believe that there is nothing I can do as a human being that can invalidate what God is doing. Amen. So keep, keep these fellow believers, these fellow children of Christ, in your heart as they navigate these really dicey and difficult waters. What other prayers do you bring to the table this morning? Barbara. I am so happy to see my dear friend Mary Ellen Zimmerman in church. Yeah. In Mary church. Ellen is back this morning. And it is good to see you. Jim, how's your mom? Yeah, the, the Canada situation is the third big prayer that we need to, to live together. And, you know, the whole, um, the whole thing, you know, the mandates, every day that comes, they were going to lift them, what, March 1st or March 14th? So every day is closer to them being lifted anyway. Um, but it's, it's really a, a difficult, difficult situation. Lynn. The third situation, the medals in the Olympics and the Russian doping situation. Prayers for all the Olympians. Prayers for all the Olympians, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Lynn said her husband Reggie has his surgery tomorrow. So, oh, a, a week from? The 28th. The 28th, a week from tomorrow. Okay, what else? Diana. I have a happy thank you. Uh, I thank you for all the prayers of the congregation for my better half, Lou. He is in congestive heart failure. He's not going to survive it, but he's having a really good upturn. He gets up, dresses himself, and so on and so on. 
we're going to enjoy every day we have. And I, I just, the power of prayer is amazing. And I just thank you for it. Truly, truly. Yeah. Diana's yeah. husband, Lou, okay. yeah. is, is pushing through as best he is able. And God is powering him. Neil. My wife just had surgery this week. It follows me. But I want to thank the good Lord for watching over her and all the prayers that are being answered for yes. the recovery. Neil and his wife, Kathy. Kathy. Both had surgery this Thank week, you. and they are grateful for your prayers as well. Thank you. Oh. Well, I need prayers. My granddaughter, Elizabeth, she's been living in a very bad situation, and right now she's been rescued out of that. And um, so please pray for her to be able to to go on with her life. She's uh, 31 years old. She's now, her mom is out there and has rescued her for the time being. Ben's granddaughter, Elizabeth, has been in a dangerous situation and is safe now. Needs courage to continue to move forward and ways to find permanent safety and a new way forward in life. Thank you. Others? Let's pray together. Holy One, the sunshine is beautiful and warms our hearts as only your soul light can. We are grateful to come together in this space, in the midst of all the turmoil in the world, and to know that, yes, indeed, you are divine, and yes, indeed, you are still in charge. Lord, in a time of silence, we lay before you in our hearts the names of those whom we love, which are simply too tender to speak aloud. Sometimes, O oh Lord, our joy simply cannot be contained. May our feet dance when we are happy, and may our lips proclaim your glory when our joy simply overflows. God, we are grateful for this space. We pray as well for those who are on the retreat, that they are finding respite and hope and will return safely to our midst. And Lord, especially, we are grateful for your presence among us and grateful that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
times in the children. Come on down. Hey, Jim, what's the chance I could get a handheld mic? <laughs> I'm going to give it to Oliver and uh, Matilda as they come by. Thank you. He's so good, it's like he's in my head. It's kind of scary. It's a scary place to be. <laughs> good morning. In case you couldn't see, Oliver and Matilda were up with their dad on the camera. The next generation of technologists is being trained, and we are grateful. <laughs> So this morning, I thought we would just kind of do uh, a little bit more talking, since we're not all here, and frankly, there's more of you here than I was expecting to see. I'm thrilled. Um, so I was just going to let you pick a question. And if, if you're brave, raise your hand to volunteer. And I'm going to let you take turns with the mic. And um, maybe you could go with Matilda when she goes, and if Ember wants to go, she can go with Oliver, or with you, you can, you can take a turn too. Um, and we just, I'm gonna let you randomly pick a question, and randomly pick a victim, I mean a volunteer. <laughs> you can go first. So, who's volunteering? Look at all those hands. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Has there ever been a time when you didn't believe in God? If yes, what happened to make you wonder? What brought you back to believe in God? Wow. <laughs> I was probably in about 12 years old and realized that things in the world weren't as beautiful and safe as my parents had taught me. And I had believed at that point that if God was there, things would be okay. But the fact is, no matter what, God is there and things are okay. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Another brave person? Ooh. Sharon, way in the back. It's Sharon Day. Sharon and Sharon. What do you think is God's most perfect created thing in all of creation? Why? Good question. <laughs> Mankind. Ooh. I feel that Mankind, if we can have peace and get along with each other, it makes a world of difference, and God will see that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> this is kind of the follow-up to the one that Matilda just asked. A brave soul, who will it be? <laughs> Jennifer, this would be a good one to raise your hand for. <laughs> what one thing created by God do you think we could do without? Why? as a child? 
if yes, what would it like? Um, who attended with you? If no, when, when did you start attending church? Why? Um, yeah, I attended church as a child with my grandmother. Um, it was the, uh, there was a church right in the corner of the Rain Road and Barton. I don't think anybody remembers that now. But it's right in the church. It's down in the... Uh, what was Frostville. It? Yeah, Frostville. When you go down to Frostville, down in the down there, that little white church, it, did, yes. it wasn't always there. <laughs> and, and my Sunday school teacher, I can't remember his name, <laughs> he read the Bible 57 times, he said, which I thought, okay. Uh, I haven't gone through a bunch yet, so I, but yes, I've gone to church since I've been, you know, like you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, are you willing? Sure. <laughs> Have you always believed God exists? And how do you know that God exists? These are tough questions. This morning. They are <laughs> tough questions. Um, I would say I've always known um, because of the examples of my family, my grandparents, my parents. And then what was the second part of the question? Was that? How do you know that God exists? Um, God exists in all of us. So through the kindness you see in others. That's God working. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. Oh, everybody, you are such gamers. Thank you for asking the questions, and I hope maybe it made you think a little bit, too, about you know your own as you're thinking about God and wondering about God and all those things. Let's pray together before you go off with Linda. God, we are grateful that we can ask you questions and that even when we can't find the words, we can pray to you and draw near to you and know deep in our heart that you are with us. Amen. Amen. Small but mighty group. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one this morning. You are very brave, and I am very grateful, um, especially the last three of you that I put on the spot. <laughs> um, you know, this is just such an amazing place because there is such a, a sense of God's presence and such a sense of community that we truly are um, who we are because we are together, and I am grateful for that. As the ushers uh, come forward with the offering plates, I simply ask you to reflect on all that God has done, all that God is doing, and on the hope and promises that God has placed before you for this life, for the next 10 minutes, and for the next 10 years, and beyond. Truly, we are grateful for your presence in this place, for your time, for your talents, for the choices you have made to be here, of all the places you could be. Thank you.
giver and the gifts, O oh God, we give you thanks. And we ask that you lead us and guide us to use these gifts to further advance your kingdom of love and hope and peace in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations you place upon each of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your eye, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am on the tail end of a little cold here. <laughs> the cough is always the last to go. This week, I had a wonderful conversation with Linda Elkins, who is our Sunday School co-superintendent. We were talking about last Sunday when the children made Valentines for everyone and what a good time they had working together. The big buddy that wrote the words and the little buddy that stuck on the stickers. Our teachers are amazing and our children are truly special. Then Linda went on to tell me how she is always amazed when she asks the children if they remember what the lesson was about the week before, how much they remember, even the younger ones, and how eager they are to share what they remember with one another. You know you are doing something right when you get such recollection and carryover from week to week. I am not going to risk embarrassing you and me by asking what you remember from last Sunday's message. I have to laugh because when I talk to my mother on Sunday evenings, she'll say, church was great, the sermon was so good. And I'll say, really, what was it about? Well, I don't remember, but it was really good. <laughs> and I think we all kind of have those days. <laughs> Let's take a few minutes and just look back together. We have been in Luke's Gospel for a few Sundays now. You may recall we went fishing with Jesus and Simon Peter, and when Simon set aside his skepticism and cast that net one more time into the deep waters, the net was filled to overflowing with the very best fish. Last week, we sat down and listened in on the Sermon on the Plain, Luke's version of the telling of the Beatitudes, similar yet a little different from Matthew's version. This morning, Jesus is continuing to teach, so let's settle in again at his feet and open our ears to hear something new and something fresh. First, take a moment to just look around you. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, this story is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus goes up to a high place, and everyone gathers around below where he can be seen and heard. It is actually a bit like this sanctuary setting where the worship leaders are elevated above the rest of the congregation. If you have ever visited an old church, say in Boston or Plymouth, Massachusetts, you may have seen a pulpit where the preacher literally climbs a full set of spiraling stairs to reach the place he would preach from. It's a little bit intimidating. But that's not the case in Luke's Sermon on the Plain. Everyone here is on a more level playing field. If you were listening closer, you could probably always hear Jesus, but you might not always be able to see him. <coughs> I imagine Jesus moving freely in and among the crowd as he preaches. I wish I could preach that way. Those who were sick or hurting might reach out and hope to catch his eye. As their fingers brush against the hem of his garments, they suddenly realize their pain has disappeared. Their vision has been restored. Their hope has been restored. Truly, this man has healing powers straight from God. And his words, 
His prophetic words offer healing for the entire community, not just for a handful of folks. Listen now as I read the next verses from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and I'll read from the New Living Translation. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer them your shirt also. Give to whoever asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? The golden rule. You know that that same sentiment appears in the tenets of every major religion and philosophy across the globe. In Islam, it sounds like this. No one of you is a believer until they love for their brother or sister what they love for themselves. In Hinduism, it goes like this. This is the sum of duty. Do nothing to others which, if done to you, would cause you pain. Even those who believe in no religion will tell you, be a good person, don't go around hurting other people. It is a universal sentiment that goes back thousands of years. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, you know, as I have grown older and hopefully a little bit wiser, I have discovered that if I have a question, it's likely that there's at least one other person who has that same question and is hoping someone else will ask it so they don't have to. I have become that person that asks. This teacher, Jesus, has so much wisdom, and I certainly would not want to look foolish in front of Jesus. But I imagine someone in the back of the crowd is, is raising a, a tentative hand. Teacher, teacher, what does that even mean? I mean, we have been taught this our whole lives, but I'm already strapped. I have so little for myself and for my family, and now you're asking me to give our barest necessities to people who treat us poorly. How are we to do this? Thank goodness someone is willing to risk looking foolish to gain a little more knowledge or wisdom so the rest of us don't have to. Jesus takes a deep breath. Obviously, these people really want to live better lives, and they long to walk in the way of Jesus. So he continues. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for God is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Jesus is drawing a line in the sand here between those who want to follow the way and those who have not yet understood God's message of love. He's basically telling this group gathered that if they are willing to accept Jesus' love so freely, they also need to offer that love to others, whether they are deserving of it or not. As Jesus moved among those gathered on this level playing field, where no one was elevated above another, 
He didn't stop to ask if they deserved the healing or blessing they sought. This is how God shows perfect love to all God's children. And this is how Jesus is instructing his disciples to treat one another with unquestioning, extravagant love. There's that hand in the back again. But, but Jesus, even him, he is such a jerk. You want us to share our food and shelter with him? Jesus sighs a deep sigh. These children have so much to learn. The patient teacher calls them closer and continues to speak. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The measure you give is the measure you will get back. Now, these are tough words for a couple of reasons. At first glance, they seem to be telling us that God is preparing to judge each one of us based on our treatment of one another. But hasn't Jesus just been preaching about perfect love and boundless grace? Maybe Jesus isn't talking about God judging us. Maybe he's talking about our very real propensity to judge one another. It's true, isn't it? How easily we keep score and decide uh, how much or how little to offer someone based on what we think they deserve. Every time I do something for them, all they do is complain. They are so ungrateful. I'm just going to stop sending them anything. No. Jesus is reminding us that because God's grace is vast and boundless, and because we are created in the image and likeness of God, who loves with an everlasting love, we are called to extend that same love to others, period. For those who do not yet recognize the presence of God in their own lives, we are called to point them in the right direction, to help them understand what God is truly like by showing them. Give and you will receive, and not just as you have given. The return on your investment will be many, many times over. This is the way of the Lord. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken tight together to make room for more, running over, pouring out into your lap. The measure you give is the measure you will get back. There is no end to the grace and love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and sing together hymn number 352 of the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus.
love of Jesus. Where when you can't feel the bottom, you don't panic. <laughs> you simply open your arms and drink in more. This morning I was reading a devotional by Matt Laney, who was another young man that just, the, the, the future of the United Church of Christ is, is just in such good hands. He was talking about an interview someone did with Leonard Bernstein, the composer, conductor, and the interviewer asked Leonard Bernstein, what is the hardest instrument to play in the orchestra? And just like that, Leonard Bernstein said, second fiddle. <laughs> Everyone wants to be the first fiddle, the first trumpet, the first whatever, whatever. But playing second is so hard because you're admitting that that other part maybe is a little more important. But without your part, there is no harmony and the music is incomplete. So we are called to play second fiddle to God, not to be God, not to be the best, but to harmonize and work God's good in this world. So as you go from this place, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Know that wherever you are, wherever you go, the deep, deep love of God goes with you. Amen. Go in peace.